Today we're checking something out that I don't think I've seen before on the channel. Inside this box is a Snapdragon powered two-in-one device from HP and I think it's the first Snapdragon powered uh, two-in-one laptop like keyboard slash tablet device that I featured here like this certainly from HP and the benefit of going with Snapdragon here is that you get some of the benefits that you're used to experiencing on mobile like tremendous battery life what we have inside this package is apparently capable of like 24 hours battery life and then somewhere around 20 hours of video playback so you're going to Japan and back and you're watching video the whole way well I mean I gotta hop back on a flight sometime soon and then this will be quite the companion for such a thing. Oh, and then also the connectivity aspect that comes with Qualcomm. So of course you got a uh, Wi-Fi 6 built in and all kinds of wireless connectivity, even on the cellular. LTE wireless broadband, Snapdragon X20 LTE CAT 16. So lots of connectivity opportunities in here as well. HP Elite Folio 13.5 inch two in one. So don't call it a laptop because it's more than that. It's a two in one folio it's gonna be quite lightweight weighing under three pounds i'm happy about that yes very lightweight all right so let's get this plastic portion off very executive unboxing experience hp logo matte black container this gives us our indication of the capabilities so of course you have a fully folded orientation you also have a laptop like mode this is sort of more like a tablet which brings the display closer this is good for smaller tables cafe tables also of course on the airplane on a tray table and then there is a fold down mode and because of that pen input you can use that for note taking possibly even sketching oh wait a sec this has like the leather with the stitching Cool. All right, let me put this to the side just for a moment. Also inside the package, we have their braided power brick, USB type C connector, and you can see how the cable itself has this cool uh, gray and black braiding there, which is nice. Uh, it also helps it uh, from getting tangled. Oh, and by the way, I'm reading the spec. It is a vegan leather cover that's over there, if you were concerned with it. 65 watts is the power brick. Very slim and slender as well. Slim and slender, don't those mean the same thing? We double up. Plastic. Here are some pen tips. Where's the pen? All right, main attraction time. Ooh, so yes, a leather-like feel, very executive. It hardly even looks like a computing device. You roll up with that, it looks like you just have your notebook in hand. It's very covert. And also, I can imagine durable. The thing about these types of finishes is they kind of deal with nicks and bumps uh, better because they don't it's not like such a slick or glossy finish at least on the outside here Tons of display there. That's 13.5 inches and look where the pen is housed up top That's a nice location Because what it means is when the device is closed down the pen is protected. It's not gonna jump out of there This is a really safe spot It also looks like it's the place where you charge it up and it's cool the way they, they did the design flat enough So it'll fit in there but you still have a button on there. You have a button along top. And then of course your contact points for charging because this is where the pen is gonna charge up so it will always have battery as well. Funny enough, it looks like they've also packed in the SIM tray. Remember I was saying you have full mobile connectivity in here from Qualcomm. So you can go ahead and stick your SIM card in there, pop it in and out and stay connected all the time, which is cool. This is your laptop layout. I mean, you don't perceive that you've got anything different than a laptop at this point, which is what you want. You have a 13.5 inch laptop, but then uh, things get more interesting because it is a two in one after all. So if I go maybe back to here and I can pop out from this initial hinge and then I can fit it there. Oh, now I get it. So. It magnetically attaches. There's two little tiny nubs there, and it's a surprisingly solid connection point there. And this 
makes the footprint smaller, brings the display closer to you, and maybe, maybe more importantly, it gives you an opportunity to put something in front and still interact with the display without reaching over the keyboard. So for touch, this is going to be a better experience. I can imagine uh, the snacks or the bowl of cereal or the coffee over here. Maybe I've got my pen. Look at that. I can go grab my pen. Whoa. Very magnetic, which I like. So I can have my pen here like this. I could be at the desk. I could be browsing the news. I could be marking up a document. If I'm an executive type, it's a lot of options there. I also noticed at this moment that we have one of these privacy covers. And I like the way HP does it because it's so subtle. It's a tiny little switch that you don't notice unless you want to. And then when you pull it over, you know that your camera is covered because you have this zebra stripe covering up the section. So you have the reassurance that it's physically blocked if you choose to have it like that. So let's take a quick feel of this keyboard. Apparently, they've put a bunch of attention into the keyboard and the amount of noise that it makes. So for note taking, they want it to be very subtle if you happen to be in a meeting. I mean, even for a student, really. Well, any individual can benefit, I guess, by not annoying their neighbor with the clicking and clacking of the keyboard. Oh my god, yeah. It's very quiet. But there's still some key travel there. There's still plenty of key travel to give you confidence when you're typing. You're just lacking that loud clack, which is kind of nice. We have our speaker grills, one on each side. We have a relatively large trackpad down here. Bang & Olufsen also collaborated on the audio performance. We have our specialty keys along top for multimedia and brightness. There's even a dedicated airplane mode button. Big shift keys. It's actually a fairly substantial keyboard inside of a relatively small package. Oh, I'm missing the one potential usage as well, which is all the way like this. And it again presses down and the magnet kicks in. And in this format, you're either laid back on the couch with your content. Maybe you're, I mean, you have 20 hours of video watching according to HP. So you could just be consuming content like this. But of course, also pen input once again, whether you're taking notes or maybe you're doing some artist stuff and you have it down on the table and you prefer this angle right here. So, wow, it's actually, is it a two-in-one or it's almost like a three-in-one kind of with the number of different points at which you can lock it in. Okay, let's look around the outside. So over here we have a dedicated headphone jack, analog headphone jack, as well as a Type-C connector and LED light. That's where you're going to charge the unit. And then over on the other side, we get one more USB Type-C connector and, again, another LED light. So regardless of which side, side you're charging it on, I guess you're going to get the indicator. Oh, yeah, another benefit of working with Qualcomm and going with mobile components is they're able to do a fanless design here. So you're going to have no sound, no kick up coming from the fans, and presumably it should be decent for heat as well. Now, the display, you may have noticed, is kind of an unusual form factor, aspect ratio for 2021. It's a 3-2 display, so it's a little bit taller. Now, this is a decision that many productivity-based users enjoy because it brings, uh, for, well, for a lot of different applications, it just works better and gives you a little bit more real estate for the type of things that, that you would be doing. Uh, but also for me, when I'm set, when I'm sitting in this position, if you have the ultra wide aspect ratio on an ultra portable, like 13 inches, or in this case, 13.5, if you have the wider screen, then often you're hunched down a little bit more. Having the 3.2 lets the top ridge come a little bit higher into a more comfortable position where you spend most of your time looking. So that's what I like about 3.2. And as far as the resolution's concerned, it's WUXGA. So a little bit more about the display. They went with 13.5 inches, which is halfway between 13 and 14. Those are two of the most popular sizes. So it's cool to see it here in the 3-2 aspect ratio. Of course, they have productivity in mind here. You have enough space here to do a split screen type of setup. You could have a document on one side and a web browser over there on the other. And then also for portrait mode. So you can see here, you don't end up with something that's like crazy tall when you're holding it in portrait. Uh, like sometimes happens if you have that ultra wide aspect ratio. 
Now, as far as Windows Hello goes, yes, you can unlock from the front-facing camera. You're just going to need to make sure that you have that little switch on the front uh, in the open position so that you can unlock it with your face. This is one of my favorite features. Obviously, uh, I use it pretty much every day, and it is the superior unlock method as far as I'm concerned. Wish to see it on pretty much every device that I would daily drive. I also like the fact, as mentioned, that when you have uh, when you have it closed up, you have those zebra patterns, so you can immediately tell, oh, that's why that's not working. As far as pen input goes, I really like the way that they house this thing, uh, giving it a designated location so you're far less likely to lose it. I have lost many pens as far as uh, t various tablets are concerned when they don't have a de dedicated location to go. Sometimes they have a magnetic spot, but even in those cases, it's a little bit exposed. It can pop off, drop off. This one has its own dedicated enclosure so that that does not happen. Now you also have whiteboard in here so you can get to note taking or in this case drawing pretty seamlessly. And here we get a little taste of Kirk's artistic skills as he does, does the little cartoon cat right there. Now, connectivity is a very big deal on a mobile-centric device featuring Qualcomm and Snapdragon inside, so that's why you see that little SIM card location there, so you stay connected on the go. Next up, let's talk a little bit more about the keyboard. One thing I like that HP has done here on recent devices is they've made the font bigger on the individual keys, which for a person like me actually kind of matters because I'm not one of these blind typers. I'm not one of these touch typers. Instead, I'm looking down. They put a lot of attention into the way the keyboard feels and the way that it sounds. And you're going to get a really nice taste of the way it sounds here in this type test. But keep in mind that these noises are amplified by the proximity of the mic. And actually, there's very little click or clack it's an almost silent operation once you get a little bit of distance from the keyboard itself. <laughs> so the audio here as i mentioned earlier in the video is provided by bang and olufsen and there are four total speakers this is an important thing that is sometimes overlooked when you have a device that converts into so many different form factors do you have speakers that are supplying decent sound in each of those form factors so in this case they go with four instead of the typical two from a styling standpoint, you can see the consistency through the lineup with this kind of brushed aluminum. Now they all do have slightly different feature sets and they're targeted at different users who are looking for different things. Now, another form that I want to mention and I kind of missed in the earlier part of the video is the flipped all the way around or presentation mode, which lets you view the display without having the keyboard deck without having the trackpad in front of you, letting you get the screen very close to you with room in front. So what can I say about the device? I mean, it's obviously a very slick look to it. I appreciate this unusual texture on the outside. It feels very comfortable to grip. You don't even feel like you really need a case or anything for it when you just pick it up and go head to the car, head home, you kind of just, it just feels really natural because of that texture on the outside. Then when you pop it open and you use it in laptop mode, it feels sturdy like a typical laptop. These form factors are difficult to nail because sometimes you feel like you're compromising in one direction to get into the other, but because of the way they've utilized magnets and kept the display relatively light, when you're in laptop mode, it feels like a laptop. And when you're in tablet mode, 
it feels like a tablet. This is a kind of difficult thing to achieve and we see a wide spectrum of you know, all the different devices that come through here. So there you have it, the HP Elite Folio, one of the first Snapdragon-based devices that I've looked at. I gotta say, I was a little bit surprised. I've used it for a couple of days and it held up to, you know, my typical kind of work. Web browsing, video watching, I barely needed to charge it. The 20 hours of battery life while watching video is legit. It's a truly mobile device and it's nice to see the this variety of approaches to these multifunctional devices. Uh, that HP is bringing. The whole concept here is versatility. The whole concept here is a device that can configure itself regardless of your use case scenario. And I think that's been delivered here in the form of the Elite Folio.